we're going to talk about the scoop. The coffee scoop. Now, I have maligned the scoop previously. I'm not a fan of the scoop. I've said bad things about the scoop. I've said it's not particularly accurate. I said dosing by volume doesn't set you up for success. But people, people get angry with me for being fussy and pretentious and difficult, and they're probably right. But I still believe that they're not really your friend. Because I think coffee making is easy as long as you're paying attention to the right things. Uh, and I think one of the right things to pay attention to is exactly how much coffee you're using when you make a cup. And I don't think these are very accurate. And I need to prove that. For myself as well, there's also for you. But there's a problem. I kind of want to call this video, Why Scoops Are Bad. I have a bit of a bias, so if I demonstrate to you why scoops are bad, if I show variance in scooping that's quite big, you'll just say, well, of course you found that to be the case. You used the scoop wrong. You did it weird. You, you set yourself up to succeed. Uh, and that's a fair point. And so we're going to need the help of other people, the general public. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to venture out into the world, uh, and we're going to find somewhere where we can get people to scoop coffee. We'll give them a choice of scoops. We'll give them a choice of different coffees to scoop. We'll scoop grounds and we'll scoop beans, because why not? And at the end of it, hopefully we've got some data to, to say, definitively or not, scoops are great or scoops are terrible. So we went to Proof Rock. We set up a little experiment there, because we could do it inside, but kind of out of the way in the window, away from everyone else. Uh, and as I said, the, the experiment was quite simple. We gave people a choice of scoops. Uh, and then they had to scoop three scoops of a coffee of their choice, ground, into three little cups, and then scoop some beans of their choice into three little cups again. And what we wanted to see was how consistent were they. Uh, and that was a, it was a pretty simple test. I put out a little tweet to say we were shooting a little video at Proof Rock if people were around, wanted a free coffee, wanted to come down, uh, and people did. So in an hour of testing, we got a good amount of data. Uh, we have over 100 scoops of data. Would I have liked more data? Well, obviously, more data is always good, but do I have enough data to draw some interesting conclusions? I think I do. Do I get the unequivocal proof that the scoop is indeed terrible? Maybe not. And I'll give you the results and some conclusions I can draw from it after this short ad for this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. If you need a website or a domain, then I would strongly recommend checking out Squarespace. Start with any idea that comes to mind and buy a domain, and then start to build a website. It's really easy. You start with one of their templates, find something that suits what it is that you want to create, and very quickly you can fill it with images and words that express who you are and what you're trying to do, and you'll have a beautiful website that looks good on every browser across every device. Once you hit publish, there's nothing to patch or upgrade or install. That is all taken care of. But if you do have an issue, there is 24-7 email customer support. Take an idea that you've been sitting on, Go sign up for a free trial down below and build something. Build that website. It'll happen so quickly. And when you're ready to launch, use code James Hoffman for 10% off any website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So let's start with the good news. And that's the good news is that the things that support my inherent bias against the scoop. Firstly, the most obvious thing, a scoop is not a scoop. What does that mean? Well, if you ask someone to give you a scoop of coffee, you will get a staggering variance in how much coffee that you get. With this scoop here, it's quite a small scoop, so you know, we got anywhere from 5 grams to 14.5 grams. That is, that is a lot of variance. That is, if you tell someone to do three scoops of coffee, you could end up with an enormously different cup of coffee just from someone using a scoop differently. So on that point, I feel quite validated. Now, the average variance wasn't that high. You know, the variance bounced around a little bit. Some people were more accurate than others. If they knew that they were being tested and understood the test, they did better, unsurprisingly. But we asked everyone to act as if they were making coffee, to be careful, not to be kind of chaotic with their scooping, but to use a scoop as they might to make coffee. Now, 5 to 15 seems like I'm pulling extremes out. And in some ways I am, but those extremes exist. But at the same time, the average for this scoop was about 8 grams. That was the most common dosage. But only a third of the doses weighed with this scoop averaged out to about 8 grams, or rounded out to about 8 grams. So yeah, it produces a wide range of results and some pretty extreme variances. Secondly, there's no standard for scoops. There is no internationally agreed size of scoop. This is a, a sort of tablespoon, I suppose, as a volumetric formal measurement. This is not. And so if you say use my scoop, you'll have a good amount of variance. But if you say in a recipe use a scoop, 
who knows what you're going to get? It's just going to be chaos, right? You're going to get all sorts of everything. I, I think it's a bad unit for that particular reason. So third thing, iceberg theory applies to scoops if iceberg theory is a thing. Scoops are like icebergs. Just go with me for a second. I think deeper, narrower scoops are better than wider scoops because most people will overfill a scoop. What you see here is, is there'll be a fixed amount below the line, right? Uh, and if that's a good sized dose, that's a good thing. It means your percentage variance above this is smaller. There's a relatively small amount of excess here, which would be your typical overage by mistake. Whereas if you take a much wider spoon, right, you, you just get a bigger amount over the water, so to speak, if you imagine it as an iceberg, and less under the water. So you have a smaller consistent amount and a larger overage amount. That's probably more than I needed to think about scoops. But I would just say, if I was designing a scoop, a deeper, narrower scoop is more consistent in usage th than a wider one. But here is where things begin to fall apart for me and my high hopes of total domination over the scoop. It turns out that scooping beans produces the same amount of variation in dose as scooping grounds does which really surprised me. I actually thought scooping beans would produce more variance, but, but no, the standard deviation across the doses for each person measured and the average standard deviation was the same scooping beans as scooping grounds. So if you are a, a bean scooper, there's no, you know, don't feel bad about it. It's no worse than scooping grounds. I mean, it's no better than scooping grounds. You're still scooping and there's still variance, but you are no worse off than a ground coffee scooper. So last point, and this is the one that upsets me the most. Several people, were incredibly consistent in how they used to scoop. Now, most of the time they knew what we were doing, and so they were paying attention, but they were as consistent as I would expect someone to be with a set of digital scales measuring 2.1 of a gram. Their variance was 0.1, 0.2 of a gram across three doses. So scoops work if you're paying attention. And I guess the lesson for me is there's probably a time and a place for scoops, right? If you're out and about, if you don't have access to scales, if you pay attention, you can get a good result with a coffee scoop. You can be accurate. What you have to do is think about how you're dosing and pay real attention to it. Those of us who are making coffee before grind to order grinders used to dose coffee with our hands volumetrically using the basket of the portafilter, right? And we'd fill it up, we'd smooth out the edges and sweep it off. There were lots of funny techniques with funny names like the stock flats move to, to sort of get the most even sort of uniform distribution and consistent dose. The same stuff applies here. If you tap to settle, you'll load more coffee in. So don't do that too much. Or if you tap, do it consistently each time. A gentle, soft sideways motion to sweep will give you incredibly consistent results. And that hurts me inside. Now, you have to know your scoop. You have to know what that is and what your dose typically is, but that's pretty easy to measure once or twice. And then you know that scoop is a eight gram scoop on the money when you do it right. This just pains me deeply. I hate the scoop. I want the scoop to go away. I want people to just spend 10 pounds, 10 pounds on a cheap set of digital scales, not have to think, not have to try, not have to pay attention and get exactly what they need to make their cup of coffee, to get exactly 15 grams every single morning to remove a variable and set themselves up for a delicious cup without having to think or engage an uncaffeinated brain. Like that's the goal here. I don't want it to be complicated or fancy. I don't want scales to be some sort of barrier. I want them to help you because I think scoops don't help you most of the time. They will produce a huge amount of variation if you don't use them with a lot of care and attention. And that's not something I have a ton of at six o'clock in the morning. I will just say thank you to everyone who came out, who, who took the time to come and be kind of confused by why they had to sort of sanitize their hands and scoop coffee and then get a free coffee and then leave. Uh, it's kind of a weird thing to ask of someone. So we're very grateful for all of your help. Uh, maybe we'll do more experiments in the future. What should we experiment with next? Did I say the word scoop? too many times. Let me know your thoughts, your opinions, your feedback, all of that down in the comments below. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.